I wanted to share with uh, the channel one of my favorite, favorite historical authors and basically share with you how I actually ran into him. It was kind of interesting because he's not one of the more well-known historians. His name is Theodore Arrow Dodge. I might have hacked his middle name. I actually, I've never really been, I'm not sure how to pronounce his middle name. I usually just call him Theodore Dodge. And there he is, you can see him. And he's probably a historian that you have not heard of. I, I would venture to guess most of you have not heard of him. He's really not on a lot of people's radar because he just doesn't get the publicity. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this is to give him a little publicity. Because without Theodore, if he had not written his history books, if he had not done those, I can say unequivocally, I would not have created History Den. That's how much of an impact he had on really the way I look at history and also how I think about history and in my life in general. Really, he had a huge impact. And this goes back probably to the mid-90s. That gives you an idea how old I am. Yes, I'll admit it. I'm 50 years old now. But this was probably in the mid-90s, somewhere around there. And so I guess you would say this is fate. It really was fate that I would find him because you really don't see, or at least when they used to have bookstores, they don't really anymore. Now, back in the day, it was Barnes & Noble and Borders. So anyways, to make a long story short, I was, you know, I would always go right to the history section in Borders. That was, I had this one Borders I'd go to, and there were a couple, I think there were a couple different bookshelves with that. They were pretty big. I mean, they had, they had pretty sizable bookshelves. They had a section on World War II, section on the Civil War, section on ancient history, Middle Ages. I remember I liked this story because they had a really extensive, extensive bookshelf, couple bookshelves on ancient history. So what's strange is, though, I never had seen Theodore Dodge before. And so it was, I think it was on a weekend, and I decided to go up there, take a look around. And as usual, I went right to the ancient history section. And, and it, what was strange was there was always this other ancient history section I went to on the bookshelf. I never went to the back of the bookshelf where they had, I think they had three sections. Because I always liked the first one. I always thought that had the better books. But I guess fate was on my side that day because I decided to go back to the final one. And I was looking around, and I was kind of looking around, and I remember there it was. It just stood out, and it said Hannibal. It, that's all it said. It said Hannibal. And I remember thinking, that's kind of interesting. Okay, let me let me pick that up. And I was kind of looking around, perusing. I said, this is interesting. It's got all of his campaigns. And I said, wow, this might be something I want to read. And I remember, I, I think it was in the first part of the book, I said, wow, this is a 19th century author. And in those days, I was a little bit biased towards books that were written. I think it was like anything pre-1950, I wouldn't read. And that was a mistake because now I like to read all of the old authors, the classics, right? I like to go back as far back as you know to Livy, Polybi Polybius, those type of chroniclers. But back in those days, I was a little bit prejudiced. And so I wanted to always read modern stuff. But I didn't realize how bad a lot of the modern authors are in terms of injecting their opinions about all the psychological aspects of, say, Hannibal or Alexander or all the speculation that they would put into these books. They didn't just give you the direct military campaigns. It was always all this fluff. And so it took Theodore Dodge to straighten my line of thinking out. So to continue on, I remember I put the book back. I didn't buy it, which was surprising. And I said, okay, you know, I kind of drove home. And it was bothering me, though. I remember it bothered me for a few days. And I said, you know what? I think it might have been a higher force. Something's telling me, go back and get that book. So I went back, and sure enough, it was there. Now, I probably could have found out who it was. I could have gone up. You know, they had great search, uh, you know, searching software. Even in those days, they could find the book you were looking for. But it was there. So I bought it, and, and then I remember bringing it back. And putting it in my bookshelf, and how many of you how many of you have done that? Where you put it in your bookshelf and it just sits there and collects dust. So I remember it stayed there for a few years. It must have been a couple years. And I was I would look at it and I said, you know, I gotta read that. But I would find something else to do. And I think it was on a like a cold weekend. There was a lot of snow, nothing to do, absolutely nothing. I do remember that. I think it was like there was just nothing going on. So I finally picked it up. And to make a long story short, I read, I think this was the smaller, this wasn't the hard you know, hardback that I got today. It was the, like a small uh, softback book. And I think it was a thousand pages. I read through that in two days. I had it done by Sunday night before work the next day on Monday. I had read through the entire book. That's how much I liked it. And so really that's kind of why I'm doing this YouTube is I want you to read these if you get a chance. I'd like you to buy them. They're all available. All of his works now are available 
on Amazon. I will give you the Wikipedia link so you can go out and get his selected works. And what you can do is just take those, uh, put his like author name in Amazon, and then just you know put the name of the book, and you'll you'll you can get it there for a few bucks. It's it's really worth it. It's a great read. And like I said, it, he had a huge impact on how I think about history, much more than I I realized uh, even then. And I can tell you right now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, this channel would not be here today if it was not for Theodore Dodge. That's how important he was. I would read his book on Hannibal, uh, Caesar. I believe he did one on Napoleon, um, Gustav. Who else? I think he did one on Alexander Caesar and Hannibal. Those are the three that I would start out with. And then you might want to look at some of his other works. And what's really interesting about Theodore Dodge, he actually was a soldier. I believe he was an officer. Now I'm doing this off the top of my head. And he was injured in, I can't I can't remember the battle now, but he actually was an officer and he was uh, on the Union side of things and he got hurt. I can't remember the exact nature of the injury, but you know, he also was a soldier. So, you know, he had a rather interesting background as well. And here is the picture of my coffee table. And that is the only book now that I have on my coffee table. That's it. I have his hardback copy. And I remember about a decade after I, I bought his initial, I bought the initial copy. It was so worn out. I said, you know, I want to get a really nice hardback version of this. And I found it online, a hardback copy of Hannibal. And I bought it right away. I think it was like 50 or $60. It wasn't cheap, but I didn't even hesitate. I bought it and it's still sitting there today. And I actually will pick this up once in a while and just read through a chapter. It's so awesome. I'll read through like the battle of the one I just did, the battle of Metaurus, or or I'll just randomly pick a chapter, read through just the chapter. And sometimes I go even farther. That's how much I still enjoy his works and I still read through them. Okay, thanks as always for listening. And just a little update on the channel. I'm going to have another video done on the Middle Ages. This will be the Battle of Tricarum which uh, I think in the last, I haven't done a Middle Ages one in a while, but I think we left off, last place we left off was the, uh, you know, Jellimer had been, de had been defeated, but he was not completely defeated. He was able to sort of rally the forces and Belisarius had to sort of deal with sort of the after effects of that. I think he went out into the countryside, started rallying the troops. And so there was more work to be done by the Byzantines. I also will be getting out a new video on Egypt Rome, and Greece within the next month. I'm actually moving a little bit quicker. So I think everyone on the channel will appreciate that. I'll pick up the pace a little bit more. Thanks a lot, as always, for watching.